Hey everyone, in this ongoing series of fact checking the EV media, we have the next segment from Sifted, which is backed by the Financial Times. They came out with an article titled, Europe is making faster cars and better batteries than Tesla. And if you couldn't tell from the title, it is a gold mine. And before we get into it, I wanna say if you appreciate this type of content where I call out the media for putting out bias and misleading information, consider subscribing because it's free and it allows me to continue making videos. With that being said, let's get into it. So for their first example, they have to prove that they have a car that's faster than the Tesla Roadster, which has a claimed zero to 60 time of 1.9 seconds and a top speed of over 250 miles per hour. They beat the Tesla in both those regards with the Rimac C2, which like the Roadster isn't available yet, but it has a claimed zero to 60 time of 1.85 seconds, a whole 0.05 seconds faster than the Tesla and a top speed of 258 miles per hour, which is eight miles per hour faster. Well, I mean, it might be, we don't really know the top speed of the Roadster as Tesla hasn't disclosed it and look, Look, the writer of the article isn't wrong. The Rimac has a better zero to 60 time and a higher top speed. I would add that the Founders Edition Roadster was rumored to have a SpaceX option with cold gas thrusters that would make the Roadster even faster. But seeing as we don't have any data on that, I'm not gonna count it. So the point of this part of the article is to prove that there's a faster car than Tesla's. And to do that, they pick a hypercar that isn't supposed to be delivered until 2021. And it still only ever so slightly beats out the two performance specs on the Roadster. But here's the kicker. The Roadster costs 200,000. The C2 it's up against, well, that costs a cool $2 million. You could quite literally buy 10 Tesla Roadsters for the price of one Rimac C2. And not only that, I know we're just looking at the speed since that's what the title said, but just to prove my point, the Rimac also is only a two-seater versus the Tesla's four seats. And the Rimac only has a range of 402 miles compared to the Tesla's 620 miles. And even if you wanted to get your hands on the Rimac, they're only making 150 of them in 2020 and all of them are pre-sold at 2 million each. So then you have to ask yourself, is getting a 0 0.05 second faster zero to 60 time and an eight mile per hour or less faster top speed worth sacrificing two seats, 220 miles of range, oh, and paying 10 times the price? I'll let you be the judge on that one, but at least in my mind, where the author sought to prove that the Tesla wasn't the fastest car, for me, they actually ended up proving that the Roadster is punching way above its price class. How often in life do you compare two things where one costs 10 times more, and even while not factoring in the price, it's hard to say which one is a better buy. That is truly remarkable. If price wasn't a factor, I personally would rather have 220 more miles of range and two more seats, not to mention the convertible mode that the Roadster gets. Next Next up, the author talks about charging times. Now I should add that at the beginning of the article, they say that infrastructure that allows for a relatively short pit stop along the way is perhaps the only segment where Tesla truly has no equivalence in Europe. So the author does acknowledge how important the charging infrastructure is. And as of right now, Tesla is the company to beat. Even adding that, the company boasts nearly 2,000 stations in Europe and the Middle East. Alternatives, even added together and helped by state subsidies, form a smaller network of disparate chargers that are less powerful, hence slower to refill the battery, and are often faced with compatibility issues. This is an important acknowledgement because when the Peach Mark Zero is brought up for its charging speeds, we need to keep charging infrastructure in mind. The Peach Mark Zero charging speed is truly impressive, boasting an 80% charge in just under five minutes. With 310 miles to a full charge, that gives it 248 miles of range in just under five minutes, which is absolutely mind blowing. When you compare that with the fastest superchargers that Tesla has, which is the V3, which can add 75 miles to the Model 3 in five minutes, then the Peach really can flex but I do have some issues with it. Now, I don't wanna trash talk the Mark Zero. I think those charging numbers are astounding and we should celebrate fast charging like that. But I do have some questions about it. They're claiming to be using a new battery technology that according to Peach themselves, uses a special type of cell that hardly heats up during charging or discharging phase. They claim that it's so good in fact that they don't need liquid cooling, unlike almost every other high performance EV out there. They're just using air cooling. And look, I'm just going to say it, those battery claims sound too good to be true. The fact that the Peach Mark Zero won't be out until 2022 and it hasn't been subjected to third party testing that I could find as far as their battery claims make me even more skeptical. Look, I'm all for battery innovation and I would love for this to be true, but if Peach really does have a battery this good, they won't need to make cars ever again in their lives. They can just sell batteries, kick back and enjoy the trillions, yes I mean trillions of dollars that they would rake in for their superior batteries. If these batteries are true, then they would solve so many global issues, it would truly 
truly be a revolution. It would increase our transition from fossil fuels exponentially, and the implications are astounding. Call me a skeptic, but I have seen too many miracle battery claims that have turned out to be fake to believe this sort of thing. But even if the battery tech is real, which I really doubt, being able to find a charger that's able to output electricity fast enough to add 250 miles in five minutes won't be easy at all. I can't imagine the kind of current you would need to charge that quickly, and it for sure isn't widespread if it exists in the public at all. So as far as this part of the article, if the battery capabilities turn out to be true, then yes, they'll blow Tesla's batteries out of the water, but I just don't believe them. As always, you should do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Moving on, the author's third reason for why Europe is making faster cars and better batteries, and I swear to God I'm not making this up, is Nikola Motors. Yep, that's right, Arizona-based Nikola is the reason why Europe is making faster cars and better batteries. They say that, the company is US-based, but it does have a big European connection. So their reason for bringing Nikola into the picture is that they see it as a competitor to the Tesla Semi, which, okay, they're both building semis, so I'll bite. Then they dig on Tesla by saying, the Tesla program for trailer trucks, dubbed Tesla Semi, has been pushed back a bunch of times, and the first units are now expected to be delivered sometime in 2021. Which, okay, fair enough. Back on the 2017 unveiling of the Tesla Semi, Musk did say that it would be delivered to customers in 2019. I completely agree with the authors that the Semi was delayed and that's annoying. Nobody likes seeing deadlines pushed back or missed. But in that exact same vein, you want to know what the authors conveniently left out? Nikola's Semi, which was announced back in 2016 and was supposed to be available in 2020, but now it won't even begin production until end of 2023 and won't be out to customers until 2024 at the earliest. So if the two-year delay on the Tesla Semi was bad, then the four-year delay for Nikola is even uglier. But that's not even the worst part. The Nikola 1 that they announced back in 2016 has pretty much been scrapped in favor of the Nikola 2. That doesn't really matter, but the specs that were shown for the Semi at the 2016 launch event are so much better than the specs they're aiming for today. They were saying they'd have a range of 1,200 miles. Now they're saying you'll get a range of between 500 and 750 miles, which is around half of what they were saying before. And not only that, but they said their trucks would be lighter than the diesel counterparts. Check this out here. Let's say you spec a diesel and it's 19,000 pounds or truck will come in right around about 17,000 pounds. If you spec a sleeper at 21,000 pounds because you want every whistle, you know, every feature and everything else on there that you want, you'll get that thing down to about 19. That means we're gonna be saving about 2,000 pounds over a diesel equivalent. This is a huge deal for drivers because the people that know trucking understand that every pound, if you're at full load, is worth about 50 cents. Now, this matters with semi-trucks because the less the semi itself weighs, the more payload each truck can carry. Nikola was claiming back in 2016 that their trucks would weigh 2,000 pounds less than a similarly specced diesel. If you look at their website now, it shows that not only are they not lighter than diesel, they're actually 1,000 pounds heavier. So not only was the Nikola semi delayed twice as much as the Tesla semi that they're critiquing, but the Nikola semi specs have degraded a ridiculous amount. Two of the biggest selling points for zero emission semi-trucks are the range and the weight, and Nikola has downgraded both. So when you look at the Tesla Semi, it's fair to criticize that it's going to be two years later than planned. But if that's what you're going to do, then you have to criticize Nikola even more because it's going to be even later than promised and with worse specs. At least with the Tesla Semi, the specs are the same as when it was announced. Oh, and we should note that Nikola is also planning to build the Nikola Trey Semi with the Veco, and that semi will be built in Germany at first, and then it's going to be built in their Coolidge, Arizona factory sometime in 2022. I didn't bring up the Nikola Trey as much because it's not Nikola's core business plan, which is hydrogen power. That's where they're planning on getting the majority of their revenue. Seeing as the Trey is going to be battery electric only to begin, it doesn't really fit. And also when you compare the Trey against the Tesla, the Trey has about half the range, so it really doesn't prove the author's point. The authors then bring up Airide, Volta, Northvolt, Vercore, and Skeleton Technologies, which are all companies that are going to be competing with Tesla in some way or another, but they're all years away from having their products actually out to customers at scale. And due to how common it is to have these startups fail or massively under deliver on their promises, I'm not going to address each one of them. Also, it's funny to me to have the authors bring up companies that aren't even planning to deliver a product to the customer for years, and yet still compare that future product to the current product that Tesla 
Tesla is offering. Because if we know one thing about Tesla, it's that they're constantly improving and adapting their product line. So even if these startup companies do deliver on their promises in the next few years, Tesla's products will be without a doubt better than the ones they're offering today. Also, we know one of the hardest parts about producing batteries or EVs is the mass scale. Very few companies have been able to do it successfully. So in regards to all these startups, I wish them the best, but I'll believe it when I see it. So while the authors set out to prove that Europe is making faster cars and better batteries than Tesla, all they accomplished for me was proving just how massive Tesla's lead truly is. Oh,